garden today and we are planting our next row of uh, red, red raspberries, right? Mm -hmm. So well, what do you got here? I got a variety, um, small ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is that we don't have Jack with us today, so uh, he's spending the uh, night with my parents, and so we uh, we're kind of planning a date night tonight. This we, is it. <laughs> we could have done, uh, could have done anything we wanted to. Would it could have went out to eat or whatever, and looks like we chose to be here. Although we still might go out to eat tonight. Yeah. Right. So we um, went ahead and we're putting tags on all our different berries so that we remember what they are. Um, Many years ago, I purchased these little metal tags, a hundred of them, and we still have some left over. So um, we're planting a variety of Zone 3 and Zone 4. See what happens. Different people are telling us different things. Those tags are nice. Uh, should kind of show how those work Oh, for they, labeling things if they're going to be outside. They're just uh, plain metal. I use a ballpoint pen right on it, and then it comes with a little metal tag. I actually ordered these from Rain Tree Nursery, um, which is here in the Pacific Northwest. And... Uh, probably seven, eight years ago. And also, some people have expressed concern with us pl planting blackberries in our garden. Those are actually black raspberries or black caps, and these are red raspberries. So um, we know blackberries should not be mixed in with our normal garden. One thing that uh, everyone that gardens up here has a serious problem with are there's some sort of a gopher. gopher. Uh, I don't know. I haven't even seen one yet, but I've se they've been all over in our garden. And so what we're doing with these raspberries is I'm making these little wire baskets uh, to, because I guess they'll come and they'll attack the, the, new, uh, the new plants. I guess once they're established, maybe not so much, but fruit trees or anything like that, they'll just destroy them. So we did not put the baskets in the wild black, bear, or black raspberries because we just took a chance that um, since they grow up here, you know, I don't know, may, maybe they'll be um, exempt, but uh, these here... Uh, we're going to put in baskets, maybe because we paid for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. Uh, we've got six of those uh, to go, or I've got two two down and four more to go, and I'll uh, show you how I'm making those right now. So this uh, using this galvanized wire, uh, this is my pattern right here that I kind of came up with is about the right size for the the little cages. So I'm just using these wire cutters here, kind of like big wire cutter scissors, and then cutting these galvanized sections. And I'm cutting um, cutting next to the uh, the wire that runs uh, from north to south there and leaving these little uh, legs on there and that will be on the bottom. We'll use those to bend around uh, the bottom and kind of continue the, or to fa secure the, the bottom to the cage. All right, now I'll just kind of intersect, lace these in here like you'd like fingers, and then start bending these little wires back. There's probably a maybe there might be a better way to protect plants from these golfers. I don't know. I've heard some people talk about. Putting them in a five gallon bucket, drilling a bunch of holes in them, which would be one way to do it. I think this is a better way. I think once the plants are established and the root systems get a little bit stronger and more varied, then I don't think it's so much of a concern. But you only have to do it once. All right, so there we go. So we got a pretty good little cylinder there. And now uh, let's make the bottom. So to fix the bottom, as you can see, I just leave the little little uh, spines there sticking up, and then just uh, thread. I kind of save the worst to the screen to go on the bottom. So the reason why I'm one of the reasons why we're using this stuff is it was stuff that we salvaged from the previous owners. They had sheets and sheets of this stuff lining the bottom of their uh, raised garden beds, and so we dug it all up and kind of saved it. We really didn't know what for, but I'm glad we did now because they knew, obviously, that there was a problem with these gophers eating their gardens, so they'd laid that down in there. So It is labor intensive, but I don't mind doing something 
if it if I only you only have to do it once. It makes a big difference if it's over and over again. It's not so much fun, but if you do it right first time, then it's just you know one less thing to worry about. There's so much in life to worry about. Sometimes all those unfinished projects and half things that are half done compound to make your life can make your life pretty stressful and miserable. You know, just looking at something as you every time you drive in the driveway when you come home from work, looking at it, you know, it's constantly on your mind. Sometimes those things stay unfinished for years, you know, it's just constant burden to you and you just don't get any peace because of all these things that you feel like I should be doing. But what I found is Although there's always going to be that, you can never get away from it. Um, you can minimize it. Just just the way it is, I guess. You know, I was thinking, well, we've been digging all these holes mm -hmm. that... Uh, You know, just how even though, you know, we find ourselves living in a in the a world where sin rules, you know, we have to dig and work, you know, to provide for ourselves. God has made things as easy as they can be. Like having planting season in the spring when the soil is moist <laughs> and it's easy to dig because you you know, you can't get a shovel in the ground in the in the summertime, if you had to plant in the summer or the fall, it would be so much more work. You know, now it's, what's it take to dig one of these holes? It's almost effortless. Yeah. There's a lot of lessons in agri or in gardening and farming that speak to the Creator. So that's it for today. Uh, I we got a little uh, temporary irrigation system going on here <laughs> until I can get the ram pump going. I'm just a little reluctant to hook it all up because we're just not quite done with the freezing yet, and I've got a lot of exposed pipe. So uh, this will do, just do for now. But uh, beautiful evening. It's really starting to feel like spring. I felt my first mosquito this evening, and the mountains out there. Let me see if I can give you a shot of that. Just see the bottom of it. Tops all in the clouds. That's it. All right, we'll see you uh see you on the next one.